Welcome to Ayurveda Summer Camp. My name is Donna Skoglund, and I coach students into the very basic principles and practices of Ayurveda so that they can have more energy, more vitality, more confidence, and more ease in their everyday lives. So I'm so excited to offer this free three-part video series on some of these tools so that you can start to put your health and wellness into your own hands and so that you will know what to do to bring yourself back into balance. These are the very same practices and principles that I use in my own life that have helped me overcome postpartum depression, combat an autoimmune disease, as well as just increase my general health and vitality and energy every single day so that I can be a great mom, a great wife, and a great teacher and coach. And I've also coached over a hundred students into these habits and have watched them transform their lives. I've watched people overcome lifetime insomnia, lose over 60 pounds to get to their optimal weight, as well as build a better relationship with themselves and their families, and so much more. It's amazing what these very, very practical ways of living that are so simple and accessible to everyone can do to completely change your life. In today's video, I want to talk about what and how Ayurveda defines perfect health. And then really what is standing in the way of you achieving and attaining that perfect health. And then how you can start to move in that direction using a very, very accessible tool that you can use right away and start to get on your journey to feeling better every single day. So what is perfect health? And I love the word that Ayurveda uses and the, the Sanskrit word is called svasta and it translates as being established in the soul or being seated in the self. And to me, that just exudes a, a deep sense of self-confidence, being seated in yourself. So that, that really means that you are not so associated and attached to your egoic self, the, the part of you with the endless streams of worries and anxieties and fears and stresses, but there's a, a sense of self-worth where you are comfortable in your own skin, you feel at ease in your body, and you stand in the truth of who you are, and you really are moving towards your potential and becoming the person that you are meant to be. Like that is what good health means in Ayurveda. So I love it because it actually very much relates to how yoga sees consciousness. And in yoga, there's a term sat, chit, ananda. And sat means truth, chit is consciousness, and ananda is bliss. When you put that together, one way to translate that is the truth of our consciousness is bliss, meaning that bliss is our birthright. And Ayurveda sees perfect health as our birthright. We are meant to thrive. Like that is already inherent and we simply just have to stop the self-sabotaging behaviors, get out of our own way so that we can attain that, so that we can be established in who we are and live our truth and, and live from that place of deep self-confidence and self-worth. So how do we get there? That is the, the big question, the age-old question. And I really believe that the lack of that, the lack of that self-confidence and the lack of self-worth is at the root of why we self-sabotage and have so much self-deprecating self-talk where we are mean to ourselves, where we feel guilty and we are hard on ourselves. We have all these unrealistic expectations that ends up actually having the opposite effect where we make worse choices every day. And then it turns into this downward spiral where we feel guilty and then we keep making worse choices because guilt is the worst thing for your willpower. The word buddhi in Ayurveda means our higher mind. And in Ayurveda, you learn how to connect to that higher mind and you learn how to listen to your intuition so that you can hear that, that deeper and truer voice, which is the one that guides us to the things that are good for us and the one that knows what we should say yes to and what we should say no to. And the one that is seated in the self and that knows that who I am is good and I am strong 
and I am vital and I can make good choices and I can move towards my goals. I have the capacity. So we learn how to build this deep sense of trust in ourselves, which I think so many of us have lost. The problem is when we continue to engage in self-deprecating self-talk and self-sabotaging behaviors, we start to build this habit of failing and then we start to see ourselves as someone who cannot achieve the goals that we want. And then this basically causes us to have an identity around that and perpetuate those behaviors and move further and further away from our goals. So in Ayurveda, we learn to actually accept who we are fully. And that's one of the beautiful things about Ayurveda is that there's a deep recognition in our unique like each one of us is completely uniquely ourselves, which means that what one person needs to bring themselves into balance is completely different from what another person needs to bring themselves into balance. For example, the couch potato needs fire to get up off their ass and go do something. The type A overachieving perfectionist needs to chill. They maybe need to actually sit on the couch and just do nothing every once in a while. So it's very much a, a, there's no one size that fits all approach. And you learn what is the approach that's best for you. And you learn to trust in your own innate body wisdom. So what is the thing that stands in the way? And in Ayurveda, the number one cause of all of our problems and all of our diseases is a word that I also love. It's called Prajna Parada. And this word means crimes against wisdom. And the concept refers to how we do things against our better judgment. We will continue to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. And we don't learn. And we keep going in circles. And we keep eating things that we know aren't good for us. We keep staying up too late even when we're really tired. We say yes to things that we don't want to do. We stay on the computer too long and even though our eyes are burning and our mind is racing, we actually notice that we're not even feeling really good but we're so addicted to certain behaviors that we just keep doing them even though part of us doesn't even really want to. So why do we do this? <laughs> why do we not learn from our mistakes? Why do we make bad choices consistently, even when we know better? And the problem is that, you know, there's, there's many problems. One is that, again, when we have an identity around failure and going against our better judgment, then we perpetuate that because that becomes the kind of person that we see ourselves to be. So our identity very much determines the choices that we make and the behaviors that we engage in. Another thing is that we haven't taken the time to actually structure our lives and create routines that actually just guide us into the right behaviors so that we do them by default. The problem is if we don't consciously create routines, then those routines will be default. And default meaning that our life will be just a reaction of outside stimulus. So you wake up in the morning and you react to your alarm clock and you react to your kids needing something and you react to your husband needing something and you react to whatever is on Facebook or whatever shows up in your inbox and your day is no longer yours and that you haven't consciously cho chosen how you wanna feel and done things in the morning so that you can actually feel that way. So this is really so much of what Ayurveda teaches us, is how to create states that allow us to live with more balance and ease. And it starts with radical self-honesty. A first, being able to use the tool that we all have, which is self-awareness, to just notice when we are doing these things, when we are eating emotionally, and we're not really hungry, but we're actually trying to numb our numb negative emotions. And start to notice when we're actually really tired and we should probably just go to sleep. 
And I call this, this noticing and this listening to our body and responding accordingly body integrity. And the problem is so much of us have lost it. We've lost that connection to our bodies and we don't listen. We don't actually know what we need. And we're very confused because again, we're reacting to the outside stimulus and we think that we need this diet that is the latest fad diet, or we need this supplement that's the latest superfood. And we actually haven't taken the time to ask ourselves, what do I need? And why do I keep going towards these behaviors? And what am I truly lacking? Is there sweetness and nurturance lacking in my life? Is there adventure and pleasure lacking in my life? And is that why I'm trying to get it from food or from shopping or from you know, any other thing that you know that you're doing that is not serving you? So in tomorrow's video, I'm gonna share some of these principles of how we can start to actually read our bodies using, I call it the love language of Ayurveda, which is again, just such a simple tool that we can use so that we know what we need to do to bring ourselves back into balance. So stay tuned for tomorrow's video. And if you have any questions, please let me know, please respond, please hit reply, because I would love to hear so that I can actually give you those tools and share this wisdom, which is my absolute favorite thing to do. And I've dedicated my life to it because I've seen such an amazing change in my own life and in the lives of my students. So thank you so much for listening and I will see you in the next video. One more thing, there is a personal health self-assessment that I'd like you to fill out. It's 12 questions and you can create your own personal health score and just see where you are in terms of perfect health. And this is a, an Ayurvedic approach to seeing our health and you'll get a whole lot of insight from doing this. So I highly recommend it. And please post on the Grow Strong community page your score and what insight you got and what you got out of this video so that we can all learn from each other. Thanks a lot.